So Antoine, uh, with uh, the, bu uh, the Barrett bus fight, uh, actually went through uh, multiple revisions, uh, like of. like most most bus fights, uh, all bus fights, should I say? Um, you remember it was multi-stage at first. Yeah, right? uh, originally we had Barrett use a, I think it was on a second level ledge or something with the guards and everything. It was supposed to take snapshots of you or something with a, I think it was the sniper rifle. Then we wanted it to be the first time the player actually gets the sniper rifle originally. So yeah. when you beat Barrett, you actually get this as a reward. Sure. But then later we gave it earlier on in the map. And, and we were also su supposed to support on the design that if you were using the tranquilizer gun, and eventually you could uh, put them to sleep and... Yeah, yeah you could actually uh, render everybody unconscious. Uh, but then it went into uh, a bit of a problem with the uh, the story itself, where actually Barrett, you need to sort of... Uh, Disappear. I, yeah, exactly. Qu question them and everything, and then you sort of commit suicide and all that stuff. So that kind of blurred uh, the stuff. And then we cut the first section of the boss fight, which is the second level layer, you know, he was uh, on a balcony and then he jumped down. Mm -hmm. So eventually it turned out to be just this room with Barrett in it. And so it became a one-on-one, -on -one, mano -on mano yeah. sort and of confrontation. And originally, also, we were supposed to be able to maintain stealth, and depending on how you were playing in the map before getting to the bus fight, it would influence what kind of tools the the, the bus would have. Like, let's say, if mm -hmm. uh, you you went in his room before mm -hmm. you find his room before the the, the bus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he would pick up something. Then, it, therefore, it was something that he couldn't use. In his, exactly, uh, yeah. that's something we wanted to do. We couldn't. We didn't have time to do it, and with you know, all the sort of constraints we had, we actually looked back at it and used uh, the philosophy and the missing link later, yeah. which made sense a lot. Barrett's a big guy. Huge. <laughs> John had to speak. I think we're done. here. We got us a Boy Scout. He must be the one who mucked up my operation at the morgue. Get rid of him, Barrett. Oh, that's gonna be a pleasure.
Barrett. Interesting uh, story about the actor with this one and how we cast for Barrett. Yeah, I love Barrett. In fact, Barrett was cast very early. In fact, I can even remember um, when we used to do our casting yeah, sessions, I would often go back and take the tapes and the ones that I thought were interesting, I would make uh, the scene. Like we would go in with an audition script and let's say this scene's Jensen and Barrett, and we were auditioning Jensen, and we had sessions with Barrett. So I would put the different Jensens together with the Barretts, and I remember um, one of the ones with Barrett, and I would sit just in the di with the directors, uh, pretty much the creative group we had here. And I remember when they heard him, like, you know, doing the scene, and it's sort of Jensen grilling him, and he's like, in FEMA? And he had that great accent yeah. that I loved. And I remember Joe to me going, like, like, like That's I love this guy. <laughs> I love him, you know? And, and, and it was almost like Gulem and Jensen together, we heard, the, uh, we heard them, and we were like... These guys are perfect. Like they really brought the characters to life. And I should say, Al Goulam looks absolutely nothing, nothing like, Barrett. like Barrett. He's probably he about bigger, five, five and a little rounder in his late forties. But the guy's so talented. He's been on Canadian TV shows, movies. The guy's great. Jensen, what's going on down there? Those soldiers just sticks out like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> they see you. No, I was flying dark in case it got hot. You all right? I'm fine. Patch me to Sarif. I'm getting you out of here first. Get to the LZ. I'll pick you up there. You've told Sarif. See, here's the thing. The intrusions were possible because of a backdoor access into our security system that I never even knew existed. The one Sanders team used to get inside our plant. I've worked here for seven years, Jensen, and this is the first time I've seen that particular access route. David Sarif created it specifically to bypass the firewall. He's hiding something, and I think you should find out what it is. Why me? Because, as far as I can tell, Sarif created that access and was streaming a lot of data through it shortly after your ex-girlfriend suggested he hire you. So right now we're looking at Pritchard standing in uh, Jensen's office yep. because he has something very important to tell you. And what this does is this kicks off um, the possibility of the social boss fight with Seraph. That leads with to a potential boss. side that quest. That leads to a potential side quest. And we wanted to make this so super complicated on ourselves because <laughs> we wanted to make sure that we had this complete nonlinear... Um, Pat, so there are so many different ways you can approach this. You can go to your office before you see Seraph, um, in which case if you do, as soon as you get to Seraph's office, we spring the social boss fight on you first rather than your next objective. But if you wanted to go see Seraph before Pritchard, then you would get there and you'd get your objective and then you'd have to go down and see him. So there were all these many twists and turns that had to be all accounted yeah, for. That you might end up having the bus fight or not. The yeah, social bus fight. The social not, bus yeah. fight. And because we, we had to give you the chance, but we didn't want to. I think it was your rule, JF, that you know it can be totally optional whether you do the, the yeah, fight yeah. or not. Yeah, for me it was uh, really important that discovering more about Jensen's pass was really up to the players in the sense of how they, they manage to 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 move forward in the game, what they decide to do, and uh, I think it makes uh, for interesting replay value, and especially also that uh, the background of Jensen, even though it's tied into the story, knowing this information was not totally critical, but it add layered up depth to it. So, so it was a lot of fun to track all those challenges. Oh yeah. Excuse me. Mr. Jensen, isn't it? Sir, you have that charity dinner? In a moment, Isaiah. I was hoping I might run into you, Mr. Jensen. Bill Taggart. The founder of the Humanity Front. I know who you are. Yes. Yes, I imagine you do. As David Sarah's top security man, I imagine you have quite the file on me. But I assure you, Mr. Jensen, I am devastated by recent events. Really? I do not support what you and your company are doing to mankind. I believe it's extremely dangerous. But abolishing human enhancement technologies will only be achieved through legal means. I'll keep that in mind. This is your first day back since the accident six months ago, isn't it? Sir, we have to go. What happened to me was no accident. Ah, oh, my mistake. But it must have been stressful facing down a second incident so soon. I imagine it brought back all kinds of unpleasant memories. 
My memories are none of your damn business, Taggart. Did I hit a nerve? Forgive me. It's my nature as a psychologist, I suppose, to want to ask the difficult questions. You see, I find that ignoring them doesn't make them go away. You might want to keep that in mind. Now, if you'll be so kind as to excuse me. Gladly. So, um, the Taggart dialogue, where we wanted you to meet Taggart uh, for the first time, was yet another one of our challenges, because we wanted to put it on the critical path and make sure that you would you would be forced to meet Taggart for this, this conversation. And originally we had planned that it would be down in the cafeteria pretty much right when you walked into Seraph um, from, from the heliport. But um, it had to get moved, and it had to be put into uh, Athena's office. Yeah, because um, uh, th with the cafeteria, you can come from different angles. And uh, we, we weren't sure if you would be stumbling into him. So there were some complications uh, associated to that. And, and uh, also, back in the day, uh, when that uh, decision was made, we were still supporting the chaos in Serif Industries. You could put, pull out your gun and everything. And we uh, made the decision to put him on the choke point at uh, the end of the elevator to get to Sarif's office because anyway, you had an objective to get there. So as soon as the uh, the doors open, then you, you start the conversation with, and uh, with Tiger. Him. And we also, originally we wrote the conversation when we were, we, we were told that our dialogue system could support three characters that could support the player or the Jensen character, Taggart, and another character. So we'd actually written, because we wanted this conversation to not just introduce Taggart, but, but to introduce uh, Isaiah Sandoval. Isaiah Sandoval. Yeah. And so it was written and recorded so that would happen. Um, and unfortunately, then we ended up discovering that our conversation system could only, for some reason, support two characters. So we had to kind of hack into the whole system, which is why we ended up separating Taggart and Sandoval and why the two bodyguards who are there to protect Taggart are actually standing around Sandoval instead and why Sandoval is kind of yelling from across the room his sir, lines. Sir, sir. we have to hurry. So, um, hurry. but in the end, we were still able to maintain um, most of the integrity of that, that dialogue and, and really right. present uh, Taggart as a very memorable person. You're Taggart's aide, aren't you? Dr. Isaiah Sandoval, isn't it? No need to play ignorant, Mr. Jensen. I am quite sure you have a file on me that's as thick as the one you have on Mr. Taggart. You're an outspoken activist in your own right, Dr. Sandoval. When you have seen the things that I have, you find you have no choice but to stand up and be counted. Frankly, I am surprised an ex-cop like yourself isn't more disturbed by the dangers of this technology. Augmentations help a lot of people, Doc. Handicapped, war vets. Yes, but at what cost? My own friend had his life ruined by these so-called enhancements of yours. A man much like you who had no choice but to become augmented. Yet once he was, too much power can make you do terrible things, Mr. Jensen. I suggest you think long and hard on that. I'd like to hear more about your friend, Dr. Sandoval. What exactly did he do? Nothing. Was he injured in the Gulf? He went on a rampage in a shopping mall, if you must know, hoping to be gunned down by the police rather than face a lifetime battling augmentation addiction. He was addicted to augments? They don't talk about it in those corporate brochures of yours, do they? Neuropos independency, rejection psychosis, any number of physical and psychological ills have resulted from this technology, and yet we rarely hear a word about them. I'm sure the literature is out there. No thanks to the throng of corporate lawyers attempting to stop it. Your friend, did he succeed? Did he suicide by cop? No. Bill Taggart talked him down. Okay, here the the if you actually have the the social bus fight with uh, David Serif, I think it's one of my favorite one with uh, with Wayne S. Uh, not for the same reasons. I mean. Uh, with Wayne as there's a big story, uh, history between the two characters and stuff, but also it's, it, it was the fact that it was super well animated, uh, etc. Uh, with David Serif, it's not 
on the same level of quality in terms of the technicality, but in terms of uh, the experience, what I, I liked about it is that you have to go and face your bus, and depending on how uh, you played this out, uh, you, is going to say, I'm your bus, shut up and do your yeah. job, or like is going to open to you and eventually re reveal this uh, side quest that you... He was a very fun character to write, and the whole point of this was to kind of show that duplicity in his character, how he, he's a caring, charismatic guy, but at the same time he's got secrets and he's very sly and he can slip right out of your grasp. Mm. And we had this whole process for building these, these things, and the first would be to write it, and then we would test it with the team. Yeah. We had a little version, and I it remember... It was playable in an Excel sheet, it was actually. Playable in an Excel sheet, and I remember sending it out to the team, and I remember people giving us our, their feedback to let us know, and I remember someone writing back saying, am I supposed to want to punch him in the teeth <laughs> when I'm done with this? And I and, and it, that was when we kind of knew that we were being successful with this, where you can right. get so frustrated with this guy, and yet I mean, also, he's your boss. He's your boss, and That's how do it. you stand up to your boss? It's a very interesting thing. Yeah. And if you win, you get a, the side quest to find to out more your about past. yourself. Yeah, absolutely. But you have to go back to your office and read emails yeah, to do it. Yeah, so there's yeah, all yeah. these things on top of it that, that needs to that be need achieved. To happen. Yeah.